and it's going to be about chemical names and formulas. So the first thing that I want to do is talk about what is the significance of a chemical formula. So if I take something like um, glucose, which is C6H12O6, what does that formula tell us? It tells us two things. It tells us the kind of elements that are in that compound. And it also tells us how many atoms of each type of element are in that compound. So this formula tells us that there is carbon and that there are six of them. It tells us that there is hydrogen, that there are 12 of them. And it tells us there is oxygen and that there are six oxygen molecules. Oh, sorry, six oxygen atoms. So um, this part of the first part of this chapter is going to be basically breaking down um, how we write chemical formulas and how we name them. And it's going to be broken down into four parts. So the first part, which I'm going to talk about today, is called binary ionic compounds. Now, if I break down that, let me turn this sideways. There we go. If I break down what that means, binary and ionic. So a compound is more than one type of atom. Ionic means that it has a plus or a minus charge. And I'll talk about how we figure out um, whether it's plus or minus in a second. And the word binary means two. So it's a compound made of more than one type of atom as a plus or minus charge and two. So basically that means that it's going to be made of only two elements. One of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative. So here it says ionic compounds are compounds formed by the combination of a cation and an anion. Now, if you don't know what those are, a cation is the one that is positive and an anion is the one that's negative. And it's easy to remember that because uh, the T in cation looks like a plus. That's how I remember it. So, okay, how do we figure out what's positive and what's negative? Um, here they say, think metal plus non-metal, and that is a good place to start. So if we go to the periodic table of elements, uh, I just uploaded this to GC. I can't remember if I sent you a copy of this or not. Uh, maybe you have your own at home, which is fine. Um, I also uploaded the PDF version of this chapter to the classroom as well. So if we look at the periodic table of elements, how do we distinguish between metals and non-metals. Well, the first thing we want to do <clears throat> is we're going to draw a line which separates the metals from the non-metals. And generally that goes right here. And it kind of comes down like that a bit. Okay. So that literal that little stairwell there separates the non-metals which are on the right hand side to the metals, which is everything else. <clears throat> Excuse me. So almost all of the elements on the periodic table are metals. Now, <clears throat> where, when it comes to the binary ionic compounds, metals are always positive and non-metals are negative. But I've got a trick for how to remember um, which elements form which, um, which charge. So, okay, there we go on a thicker one. Oops, no, that one. All right, so starting with group one, that's this one, all of the elements in that group are going to form an ion that has a charge of plus one. Because if you look at it, basically um, the trend is that all of these elements want to be like group 18 here at the very end, because these are the non-metal, oh, sorry, these are the noble gases and they're all stable. So all of these guys want to be like group 18. So if you are, for example, lithium, 
you can either go all the way across this row to be like neon, or you can go from being number three and you go backwards to being number two, like helium. So these guys are all going to lose one electron and they're going to form plus one. It's all about like how many steps, um, how many steps the elements need to take to get to that group 18. So then you've got group two and they're two steps away. So we've got like beryllium, for example, it can lose one and then whoop, all the way back to two to become like helium. So it's going to form plus two. So all of the elements in group two are going to become plus two. Now for the moment, we're going to skip this entire middle section, mostly because um, if you see, uh, this is why I really like this periodic table, in this top right corner, that tells you how many different versions of an ion can be formed by these elements. And so if you have something like vanadium and they can form four different charges, it's, uh, it's a little bit, bit more complicated than just assigning one simple uh, number. So for now, we're gonna skip uh, groups three through 12. Then we're gonna come to group 13. Now group 13 can either go forward one, two, three, four, five, or it can go backwards one, two, three. So going backwards three is easier than going forwards by five. So they're going to form plus three. Hopefully that makes sense so far. This is just to be able to identify when you put a metal and a non-metal together, how, excuse me, how do you determine what the charge is going to be? So not only is it plus or minus, but also is it plus or minus how many? Is it plus one, plus two, or plus three, minus three, minus two, minus one? Uh, group 14 is another group that we skip for now. Because if you look at what steps group 14 have to take to become like group 18, it either goes forward, one, two, three, four, or it goes backwards, one, two, three, four. Both of those are just as difficult. So group 14 doesn't do either one of those. And we're gonna deal with that later. When we get to group 15, it's closer to 18 than it is going backwards. It only has to go forward by three. You have to go one, two, three, which means that group 15 is going to gain electrons because you see nitrogen is number seven, if I zoom in. Nitrogen is number seven and it has to gain three electrons to be like neon. So that means that all of the elements in group 15 are going to become minus three. Group 16 minus two and group 17 minus one because they only have one jump to make. So you can keep this in mind when we start putting formulas together, okay? So I just wanted to kind of give you that shortcut in being able to determine uh, which elements are going to form which kind of compounds for this particular group, okay? So like I said, today, there's gonna be four main groups that I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to describe. Today is only about binary ionic compounds. So these are compounds that have only two elements. One of them is positive and one of them is negative. So the first thing that I wanna do is uh, show you how to put together a formula. And so the way this will work is I'll give you two elements and I'll say, okay, what will be the formula if you put these two elements together? So I wanna start here. When writing formulas for ionic compounds, we use subscripts to indicate how many of each atom is contained in the compound. If I go back here, these are subscripts, okay? They're little numbers that hang out at the bottom. Remember that even though ions have charges, ionic compounds must be neutral. Therefore, the charges of the cation and the anion must cancel each other out 
In other words, the net charge of an ionic compound equals zero. So when you start putting elements together, the positive charge and the negative charge have to become equal. So here's an example. For a salt containing sodium and chlorine, okay? So we're gonna look at sodium and the probably for right now, the most difficult part for you guys is going to be finding the elements on the periodic table because you guys aren't probably very familiar with it. Um, and that's okay. But sodium is over here and chlorine is over here. So all you have to do is uh, find the element on the periodic table, look at what group that it's in. So sodium is in group one, which means that the sodium ion is going to be Na, and this is the charge, plus. When it's a one, you don't have to write the one. You just write a plus or a minus, and the one is uh, inferred. And you go to chlorine. Chlorine is in group 17, which means it's minus one. So you write Cl minus. So these are the two ions you start with. Now, like the worksheet said, the positive and negative charge has to be equal, but for sodium and chlorine, it already is equal. So you just put these together and you get NaCl. Now, because the total positive equals the total negative, they cancel each other out. So there's no positive or negative in the formula. I'll do a different example if I can clean that up a little bit. Okay. Okay, here's example number two. We have calcium and we have chlorine. So we already know that chlorine is minus one, but let's go find calcium. Calcium's here. We can see that maybe an eraser is not a great idea to use. Here's calcium. Calcium is in group two, so it has a charge of plus two. So you write it Ca plus two or two plus, either way, it's fine. So when you put this together, if you have one of each, you're going to get a total charge of plus one. You can't have that, it has to be equal. So there's um, there's a mathy way to do this and there's a shortcut way to do this. I'm gonna show you the mathy way first. Um, and you guys are in English math, so you should be like super mathy smart. That you have to figure out how you're going to balance these two charges. You cannot change the plus two or the minus one. The only thing that you can do is add multiples of each of the ions until they're balanced. So you should recognize that if you just have two chlorines instead of one, two times minus one is minus two. So then it's equal to zero. So the formula becomes CaCl2, indicating that there are two chlorines for every one calcium. I'll do uh, another example. If I do um, oxygen and aluminum, Oh, I also forgot to mention, because the worksheet didn't mention it, the positive one always comes first. Okay, you always write the positive one first. So I've got oxygen and aluminum. Oxygen is here, aluminum's here. So the first thing you wanna do is to write the formula for your ion by looking at which group it's in and assigning the charge. So aluminum is in group 13, which means it's plus three. So I go back here and I write Al plus three, and I go back to find oxygen. Oxygen's in group 16, which is minus two. So I come back here and it's O minus two. Okay, remember I said there's a long mathy way to do this and then like a short, um, I don't wanna use my brain way of doing this. So we'll do the long mathy way first, which is to figure out what is the lowest common multiple that both two and three can divide into. So what's the, the, the lowest number that is divisible by both two and three? Anyone? Bueller. 
That was a question. The lowest number. What is the lowest number that is divisible by both two and three? Two. Two is divisible by three? Yes. Yeah. So what number can both what what number can be divided by both two and three? Uh, can you say again? Huh? Can you say again? Sure. What is the lowest number that can be divided by both two and three? <laughs> I don't know what he said. Tamai, you don't know. Six, huh? Yeah, that's what I said. The lowest number that can be divided <laughs> by both two and three. <laughs> <laughs> Only and I end is up there. No, that's okay. It's okay. All right. So six can be divided by three and six can be divided by two. And there's no number lower than that that can be divided by both two and three. So the, the lowest common multiple that we look for is six. So how many aluminum do we need to make a total of six? Another way to ask that is if you have three times X, uh, I'll just use Y, three times Y equals six. What is Y? Uh, two. Two, okay, so we need another aluminum. All right, and same thing with oxygen. How many oxygens do we need to equal minus six? Three. Three. Okay, so we need two more of these. Let me erase that. Okay, so then we've established that we need two aluminum and we need three oxygen. So our formula becomes Al2 because we need two and O3 because we need three. That's the long mathy way. Okay. The short version. The short, I don't want to use my brain version. Start with the same thing. Aluminium plus three, oxygen minus two. You're going to take the three and move it down here. You're going to take the two and move it down there. And then you forget about the plus and minus. So Al2, O3. You just cross, cross down. Much easier, yeah? But you have to make sure that you understand why that works is because it's in it's in multiples because you have to have both the plus and minus be equal. So uh, let's do some practice with that. So my first one is uh, actually no before I do that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go over the names. Okay, so that's how to write formulas. Don't worry, we're gonna practice a lot until you guys are comfortable. Um, the second half of uh, this section is given a formula, you write down the name. Did they talk about that in the worksheet? Okay, so this part's called nomenclature. That just means naming. When naming ionic compounds, simply write the element name of the metal, that's the one that comes first, followed by the ion name of the nonmetal. So how do you write the ion name? You just change the endings to IDE. So whatever the name of the, uh, the element is on the periodic table, you just have to change the ending of that element name to I D E. So chlorine, if I erase all that mess. Yep. Uh, nope. Okay, so chlorine. Ooh, that's really thick. Let's not do that. 
chlorine becomes chloride. So you just change that to a D, chloride. Um, all of these guys here should be pretty easy. Oh, that's, uh, I'll do that one. All right. Try to find one that's not too thick. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Oh, that's terrible. That doesn't make any sense. Fluoride, okay. Now, the ones that might be difficult are like oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. These sometimes are confusing because you don't know how much of the ending to cut off uh, because these are all negative, right? From here to here, all negative. If they have a negative charge, they have to end with the suffix I-D-E. So nitrogen, you cut off this whole ending ogen and it becomes nitride. Oxygen, you cut off igen and it becomes oxide. Phosphorus, you cut off orus, it becomes phosphide. And sulfur, cut off the er, sulfide. Okay, so anything that end, or sorry, anything that has a negative charge has to end with I D E. The first element in the compound, it's a metal and it has a positive charge. The name in the compound is exactly the same. You don't change that at all. So if we do um, some formula practice, so in this whole unit, if you're given the name of a compound, I'm asking you to find the formula. And if I give you the formula, I'm asking you to find the name. So uh, I'll do a few examples and then I'll have you guys work on some and then we'll come back and see if you're right. So the first one, sodium bromide. So again, you go to the periodic table and you find sodium just here and bromide comes from bromine which is here. So you figure out the charge. So it's Na plus one and Br is minus one. Okay, so you just remember that. You've got Na plus one, Br minus. So if they're already equal to zero, then the ratio between them is one to one and you just write the symbols right next to each other, and ABR. Okay. For number two, calcium chloride. Okay. Again, go to the periodic table, find calcium, which is here. If you can see that. It's in group two, so it's plus two. Chloride is over here in group 17, so it's minus one. Okay. So CA plus two, CL minus one. So these two are not equal, which means that you're going to have to have two chloranes to equal one calcium. So the formula is CaCl2 so that you balance the charge. Okay, the next one, magnesium sulfide. If you go to periodic table, find magnesium. Magnesium is here next to sodium. So magnesium is plus two. So go back and write that, Mg plus two. And sulfide comes from sulfur, which is here underneath oxygen and it's minus two. So you've got S minus two. So here's the problem with doing the shortcut, I don't wanna use my brain way. If you do it that way, you're gonna end up <clears throat> crossing this down here, crossing that down here, and you're going to get Mg2S2, <clears throat> which is okay, but it's not the final answer because the formulas, <clears throat> excuse me, for ionic compounds represents the smallest whole number ratio. <clears throat> and Mg2S2 is not the smallest whole number ratio because you can simplify that to be MgS. So if you want to do it, the I don't want to use my brain way, that's fine. But just if you can simplify 
the ratio between the two, then you have to, because the other option, um, the other option is just to see that plus two and minus two is already equal. So you only need one of each. So then the formula is MGS. Either way. Um, let's see, 9, 10, 10 o'clock. Okay, I'm going to give you um, five minutes. Actually, yeah, I'll give you five minutes to do as many of those as you can, number four to 10. And I'll come back in five minutes and we'll see if you're correct. <laughs> 